Hey, I'm just recording this as I'm editing this video. I apologize for, well, the lack of editing in this, but there's a severe lack of, well, shanks in this show. Hey guys, sorry about the background noise. I know it's annoying. I'll try to fix it in editing. But the only reason that noise is there is because I'm actually away on vacation in Jamaica for Thanksgiving when this video is being recorded. Don't know when it will be out, but that's when the audio is being recorded. And that is, of course, the day Film Reg was officially announced. As I said, I'm away and I've been prepping for vacation for a few days now, so I haven't seen many videos on Film Red. I'm not quite sure what the general consensus is outside of browsing Twitter, Reddit, and chatting about it in the One Piece Discord server, which I'll probably link in the description box down below. It's a really fun server. I really like going in there and chatting about the chapters after they come out. So I have no idea what the general consensus for this is. But let me say, first of all, now that the announcement is official, we know a couple things we didn't a few days ago. But when this was originally announced, there was of course a possibility that it wasn't even about Shanks at all, because all we had were the scar marks through the D initial in the word red. Now, a couple of things. One, very interesting that the scars are through the D. That's fascinating to me. That already, when I saw the scars were through the D, I was like, Shanks, it's probably about Shanks. But we've also been trolled with these movies a lot. Like Shiki in Strong World is a, a member of Roger's generation and he gets beat by pre-time Skip Luffy with no hockey. When Shiki could probably one-shot the entire crew with zero difficulty just with Conquerors, assuming Shiki has it. So a lot of these movies can be a letdown sometimes. They can be really, really disappointing. And it just happened. So I was worried initially and I didn't want to make a video on it until the official announcement came out. That how do we know this isn't like the kid story? Like how do we know for certain this isn't the story of how kids lost his arm to Shanks? Like how do we know that the scars in the word red aren't an allusion to Shanks being a bad guy that appears in the movie for like two minutes and we just see Shanks cut off Kid's arm and then the whole movie is about Justin Captain Kid who nobody likes, I, at least I don't. Maybe people love the kid and I'm not really aware of it. I don't like Kid. I am not a fan of him, I feel like he was really overhyped by the fandom, and didn't really live up to any level of degree of hype. Even the hype I do think was deserved, was it lived up to, but that's not the topic of this video, we're talking about Shanks. So okay, this movie is obviously going to be heavy Shanks, and I've seen a cut one thing float around that I have seen, it's the idea that this may be the flashback movie for Shanks. Because this is a really long manga, and I don't know if Oda would want to keep all that content in it. I don't know if Oda really feels like he can do a full Shanks backstory that will satisfy fans, but I don't necessarily agree with that idea. I do think we'll get Shanks flashback in this movie, I do think we will, but I don't think Oda is going to literally give the Shanks backstory to the anime, but I do think this movie will focus a lot on the origins of the Red Hair Pirates. I think we will see via flashback during the movie, at the Straw Hat go to fight the main villain, who is a, apparently this woman with headphones, so I'm gonna call her Lady Headphones. So, as the Straw Hat go to fight Lady Headphones, because that's all we can call her, she doesn't have a name yet, who I think is the main villain, as the Straw Hat go to fight her, maybe we'll get flashback, Bill she'll have a connection to Shanks. That's my theory. I think this woman is a woman who is being manipulated, because a couple of the translations that we've seen of like what the movie is about, it sounds like she has to make a choice, it sounds like she may be being manipulated by someone, and maybe the straw hat has to go save this old friend of Shanks that they used to work with him, and maybe in the movie we can get flashback to how Shanks met her in the beginning of his journey. She could even be, here's a theory, what if she's a former member of the Red Hair Pirates who left the crew? Like, what if she's Usopp? What if we're doing, like, a story here where she used to be a member of the Red Hair Pirate and she left because this is, like, a parallel to Luffy and Usopp and, like, Shanks failed. Like, Jack, that, that is where Luffy has already surpassed Shanks. He managed to repair and work with Usopp to fix this broken bridge that formed in his crew. What if Shanks had to kick a big friend out of the crew? What if maybe Shanks did say, if you disagree with me, get off my ship? Like, what if that happened? What if it meant to parallel Usopp and she used to be a member of the Red Hair Pirate and she can tell the story of the origin of the crew? 
to the Straw Hat? Maybe not, because I don't think Luffy may want to know that. Or maybe he would, because Luffy does actually seem genuinely interested in learning more about Shanks. He freaked out and was super fascinated whenever Rayleigh talks about Shanks dealing with Roger. He he's always seems to be like, oh, Shanks, he seems to fanboy a little bit. So I think that's really cool. Maybe he will be interested. Maybe Luffy will even ask, like, how did you meet Shanks? And she can tell him, and maybe she met him early on, and maybe then we can get a bit of the formation of the Red Hair Pirates of Shank going to recruit Yasop in East Blue. Because, fascinatingly, the first member of the Red Hair Pirates, this is a direct difference from the Straw Hats. I found this to be very interesting. Because Ben Beckman is like the Zoro of the Red Hair Pirates. He's like the quote unquote vice captain, even though Zoro's not really a vice captain, but fans consider him that. He's definitely like the second strongest, the second main dude. Luffy's like right hand and partner. He's one of the wings of the Pirate King, after all. And I think it's fascinating that Yastop with the second member to join, because that breaks the parallel between the Straw Hats and the Red Hair Pirate. Which is cool to me. The Roger Pirates have a much more direct parallel to the Straw Hat with Luffy and Zoro and Roger and Rayleigh being the captain and like their right hand being the first two members to join, which I found interesting. And I'd love to learn more about how Shanks recruited Yasop. I would really hope it wasn't as simple as Shanks strolled up to Sierra Village and like joined my crew and Yasop was like, okay, and hopped on the rowboat and left. Like, yes, I've been married, I would hope there were more to it, like, I would hope it was like a luffy Zoro situation, where Shanks had to put in effort, like, he had to convince Yasta that he was worth, that like, he was a captain that was worth leaving his wife and child for. I hope Yasta didn't just look at Shanks and go, yeah, that's the guy I would have abandoned my family for within, like, two minutes of meeting him, because that would be really messed up. But then again, he, he, is, a, he is the kind of man to abandon his child and wife, and never check in on them. At least I hope not. Like, there's a lot of questions about Yastop. And did he know his wife had died and his son was, an or was basically an orphan? Like, did he know that? I would assume not. Because he does seem to care about Usopp on some level. But it's interesting we've never actually really seen in depth him reacting to Usopp. Him reacting to the bounty poster of Usopp. Then we get basically everybody else. We get Shanks to react to Luffy, and it's weird we never thrown in, especially at post time skip where Usopp got his god Usopp bounty poster. Yet we never saw Nyasa pick up the poster and be like, Oh, that's my boy! <laughs> 200 million berries. God, oh my boy is God. Apparently I'm the father of God. What does that make me? Super God? Like, you would think we get something with Nyasa, but we don't. Which I would love to see. I think we'll definitely use this to focus, I think, on the immediate origins of Shane. Then while I do think we're definitely gonna get a Shane flashback in the manga, I would assume a Shane flashback would not would be substituted or majorly connected to the story, like why Shane went after the gum gum fruit, what he, what's he been doing, why he hit the pony the road pony left if he is the one who hit it. Because I think there's a chance Whitebeard did it. But it could have been Shanks that hit it. But like, why he did that, why he's doing everything he does in the story, why he had to connect it to the five Elder Stars. Those are the things I think we're mainly going to focus on. And probably how he was recruited to be a cabin boy or a pirate apprentice on the Roger pirate ship, the Royal Jackson. Like, stuff like that. I feel like that's the kind of stuff we're going to want to focus on in the manga flashback. So I do think there is a possibility that the movie flashback shows us the recruitment of the original, like, five, like, Shanks' version of the East Blue crew, like, like, Shanks' version of the crew that fought Arlong, like, his original, like, five members, his original basic necessity member, because, and you notice, once we get into the Grand Line, Luffy's less focused on roles, because in the East Blue, Luffy was not focused on strengths, I do want to do a video about that someday, but Luffy did not care how strong you are, but he was focused on roles, and I think Shanks was probably the same way, Though I do think Shanks does value strength more than Luffy does, just because of how powerful the Red Hair Pirates seem to be. They're described as having the highest average bounty of any pirate crew ever, even though the Straw Hats are apparently probably getting up there. He does have that, he has the highest average bounty for his crew out of any pirate crew in the world. So I think it's safe to assume he values strength, but I imagine like Luffy when he first set out to sea, He's not an idiot. Shanks is way smarter than Luffy, and considering Luffy did this, he would probably like, okay, I need a navigator, I need a cook. Probably knowing Shanks, he'd probably like, I also need a doctor, 
I need a net, I need a Thorfman, I need this, I need that. He knew what he needed, he knew what he wanted, he probably wanted a sharpshooter in Yasop, somebody to attack from range distances. Like, he wanted all that. And I think that's very important to know that's probably what he was looking for, and maybe we can see him recruit those original core role to members that he was looking for. And maybe along the way, getting back to film Red, he'll run into this woman, and this woman will, like, join the crew temporarily. It could either be, as I described, a crew member who had a fight with Jin and left. Because I'm assuming there's plenty of fight with Shanks over. Because Shanks, if we're going off chapter one, unless that was just a difference in Odo's writing style back in the very beginning, Shanks is one of the few people in this show to just murder somebody with a gun. Like, Lucky Rue, he just had Lucky Rue straight up murder a man shoot him in the back of the head with a gun, and be like, we don't play by any rules, we're pirates. Which is interesting, because even the Straw Hats have a sense of, like, honor. And the Straw Hats, Luffy clearly modeling himself in a few ways after Shanks. He definitely idolizes him, and he definitely got a lot of who he is from Shanks. And it's interesting to me that Luffy doesn't do stuff like that. Like, yeah, Luffy cheats, and he doesn't play by traditional rules, but the Straw Hats do have some degree of honor. So, Shanks, who knows? There's probably a lot of messed up stuff Shanks has done, or at least let happen. Like, what do you think Shanks did to keep Kaido away from Marineford? Why did he have a connection to the five elders who casually talk about something that I assume is genocide? Like, they call it a great cleansing and talk about how they have to do another one, and they're already responsible for multiple genocides, as far as we know. So it wouldn't surprise me. And Shanks has the connection to them. He has, he has a lot of connections. He's draped in mystery. Now, I'm not saying Shanks is evil. I don't buy into that theory. But he may not be Luffy. Like, I think a lot of people are torn between he's either evil or he's Luffy. And I think Shanks is probably in, like, a gray area between being a complete black and white, like, on the black side of the black and white chart, a complete monster of the degree of Kaido, who's, like, manipulating Frank. I don't think he's that. But I also don't know if he's, like, Luffy. He's like, oh, I don't need to kill people. I just need to break their spirits. And he's like, oh, you can join my crew, even though you betrayed us. Like, I don't know if Jake is like that. I don't, I think Jake would definitely do a lot of the stuff Luffy had done, like, go to war with the world government over, like, Robin. But I don't know if he would, like, go after Nami so much. Assuming she had to trade them and stolen his strip, he may go and beat the crap out of her and take his ship back for all we know. Like, he, that's where he may be. He may be in between. Like, he would definitely go after Robin, but he may look at Nami and be like, you should have just asked me for help from the start. You took my ship. I gotta beat your ass now. Like, who knows? Who knows what kind of guy Jake's in? But I think he's probably in between Luffy and a complete monster. He's probably in between in some, like, weird piratey gray area between the two because I don't think he's gonna be evil but I don't expect him to be a carbon copy of Luffy obviously that's not the kind of writer Oda is but there's probably enough reasons that you could have a fight with him like Luffy he seems to be pretty not reckless but he seems to be pretty like he went to Marine Ford and interfered in a war between the White Beard Pirates and the world government and started to take on Blackbeard I mean, he goes and he walks into the room with the five elder star. Like, he does a lot of- he, he is crazy. Like, he ha you have to be a little crazy to go to, go to a war like that. Because what if the world government had said yes? Like, let's keep fighting. Then the red haired pirates would have had to fight that war. And well, they probably would have won. Like, let's be honest, they would have devastated them. That's still insane. Like, that's the kind of thing that would still have Nami and Usopp quaking in their boots if Luffy suggested it. They would do it, but they'd be like, that's mad. And there is a possibility that somebody turned around the chains at some point and they're like, Wait, 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 you're going to meet with the five elders? No. Like, why do you have a connection? Because, for all we know, the Red Hair Pirates may not know why Shanks has the connection. He may keep that secret from his crew, and maybe somebody, like, maybe this woman raised the fuss and she got kicked out of the crew. And, like, she had a fight with Shanks, and Shanks just said, I have my secrets, and she's like, I don't like you hiding things from me, I thought we could trust you, and they had a fight, and then she challenged him, and she got kicked out of the crew, and maybe now she's been captured, and maybe now, like, the Straw Hat wants to go, has to go save her, like, maybe Luffy's like, oh, she's Shanks' friend, I need to go, I'll go save her for him, and maybe Luffy goes and saves her, and the movie is maybe about him helping her, like, repair her relationship with Shanks, like, maybe that's what it is, maybe Luffy and the Straw Hat, like, without even meeting Shanks, repaired a relationship, or maybe the movie ends with them returning her 
and Luffy and Shanks, like, glancing at each other. Like, they're not ready. Like, it's not time yet, but Luffy and Shanks do have the moment where, like, he's on the Sunny, the head of the Sunny, and Luffy's on the head of the Sunny, and Shanks is on the head of the Red Sword. They just look at each other, and they just nod. And they're like, see you soon! And then that implies they'll meet in the manga soon. Like, maybe something like that happens. Like, they don't, like Luffy and Shanks do not come directly to face-to-face. -to -face. I don't think that's gonna happen in this movie. I would be shocked if this movie contained a scene when Luffy and Shanks be go face to face. That would blow me away if that happened. I would be flat. And while I know a complete Shanks origin movie would be awesome, and I know there's a lot of fans who will probably tell you, Shanks can sell a movie. Shanks is awesome. Like, if you put out a movie about Shanks standing on a cliff, finally got a bounty poster about Luffy, people would buy it. I've seen a, a joke suggested that the movie's literally just Shanks looking for a really cool rock. He's looking for, like, this legendary, epic-looking rock. And he can, just, like, like, the most legendary rock in the world. He's like, I want to stand on the most legendary rock in the world when Luffy becomes Pirate King so I can stare at the newspaper and smirk and go, boy. Because all Shanks does in this manga, all he does is, all he literally does is sit on rocks in the middle of islands, in the middle of the new world, and just look at newspaper or bounty poster and smile at pictures of Luffy like a maniac. Like, <laughs> Good boy, Luffy. It's ridiculous. But I think that's not what we're going to be about. But I don't think we're going to get a full Shanks movie. Only because I know a couple things. One, I've heard this. It may be a rumor. But I've heard in the manga, Oda gets really nervous when he does get to, get to include the draw hat. Like, readership dips during stuff like Reverie. Like, people love Reverie. People keep reading. But if it goes on too long, they start to see a dip in readership. Because apparently, especially in Japan, the draw hats are a big draw. Like, people in Japan really like Luffy. They really like the Straw Hats. He had dominated every popularity poll. The Straw Hats make up most of the top 10 best-selling, most popular characters in the world. Especially if you look at the uh, worldwide popularity poll, most of the top 10 are Straw Hats. So I really don't think, and the Straw Hats are all within the top 20, so I don't think it would make sense to not include all the Straw Hats in the movie. Like, I just think that would be a really risky move. Because, well, I think Shanks can sell a movie from a business perspective, it's so unbelievably risky doing that. Putting manga level material, like putting part of Shanks' backstory in a movie without the straw hat. What if people don't see it? And then Oda needs to reference it. Like, they need to make sure anybody who is current with the manga, who likes it, goes and sees this movie if it's going to be important to Shanks' character. Because Shanks is obviously going to be really important post Wano. So, I don't think that would make any sense. I don't think it would make sense to make it all about Shanks, but I think what you could do is, you could use this new character, Lady Headphones, as I'm calling her, to draw in people and have her be the character the Straw Hat has to help. She's the character the Straw Hat has to, like, team up and help. Like, she fights them in the beginning, but they help her, like, reunion, they help save her, and then they help her, like, rediscover her and decide to go back to Shanks. And maybe the movie ends with them dropping her off, and her and, Sh and Luffy and Shanks like nod at each other as she goes and like rejoins the red haired pirates or something. Or like she goes and reunites with her old friends or something like that. And throughout the movie, maybe if she was an early member of the crew, like maybe we could even have it be that she left before Fusha. Like maybe she left post Fusha Villa because Fent had been a pirate for a few, for a, about a decade or so, I think, given my map. I think he was a teenager. When Roger died, so he went, and he was like 24, I think, during the Luffy flashback. So there's plenty of time, right, to form a pirate crew and for him to sail around the blues with this woman. And maybe she leaves pre fusha like maybe she'd been gone since way back before he was in Yonko. Maybe he she joined after that and left before the present story. So there's a million possibilities for how that could go, but I feel like we could use her, especially if she was pre fusha to show the origins of the red-haired pirate. Maybe you could even do the opposite of that and have her join in the Grand Line and you could tell the story of how Shanks became a Yoko. Like, maybe she could be like, I joined on the adventure that made Shanks and Yoko. Like, Shanks saved, maybe she's like a prisoner of Kaido that used to be imprisoned in Wano and like, Shanks ended up in Wano and befriended her and like, she like, did, she like fought Kaido and like, bested him and got away with this woman. And, like, that is why, um, 
the world government make him a Yonko. Like, maybe that will happen. I don't know. There's a lot of possibility, but this is me kind of just rambling. I think this is a former member of the Red Hair Pirate who left the crew, and we'll get to see her come back, and maybe through her we'll get some of the origins of them. I think we may, maybe, in this movie, because Oda has done this recently, because there's been so many major milestones. He has allowed the anime, and Toei specifically, to include minor spoilers. Now, just throwing it out there, the scars are highlighted in the trailer. What if, regardless if I'm wrong about everything else, somehow in this movie we see how Shanks gets his scars? I, I, from Blackbeard, like, what if we see that? What, because, I mean, we, what if we see that and it references something that happens in the manga a couple months later? Like, this could be, like with Stampede, there could be a very minor thing. Because this is the thing with Oda. They could be talking about, like, a 15-minute sequence. This whole movie could focus on Shanks, but the only, Shanks, but the only real spoiler sequence could be, like, a 15-minute period in the middle of the movie where we focus on how Shanks got his guard, and that is the big revelation of the movie. That's, like, the big moment. Much like how One Piece Stampede was hyped up to have this thing in it that Oda would never normally let Toei do. I mean, Oda said in interviews before that movie came out, like, this movie has something I wouldn't normally let them do, but special occasion. And then, of course, it was literally just a word. Like, it was literally just two words. It was literally just, he wrote the word last hell. Because he was aware that nobody actually knew how to write it properly. Like, that we didn't know the written name of the island. We had the heathen... Oda had never really talked about it in interviews, and he had never corrected anybody, but the fandom at large, and I'm sure Oda was aware of this, it had been over a... Was, the Raftel was name dropped in the beginning of the story, so I'm sure he was aware of it. We all called it Raftel, with an R. Raft, like Raftel, like Raft, like a Raft, it was Raftel. And that was wrong, and Oda talked that that isn't something I would normally reveal in a movie. I wouldn't normally let them do that, but it's a special occasion because it's like the 20th anniversary of One Page or whatever. I think it was the 25th. I don't remember when Stampede came out. That was years ago. That was pre-COVID. Think about that. I from the last movie that I saw for a lockdown. But it was, it's insane, all right? It's insane, but it's entirely possible that this is literally just him being like, we're going to show how James got the scar, or we're going to hint at it. Maybe we'll show part of the fight, with how Shank will still show like the fight starting and skip towards the end and Shank will have his guard and then later on in the manga we'll find out how. Like maybe the reveal will be the island that he got them on. Like it's entirely possible knowing Oda he's like well what you're gonna find out is where Shank was. Like it will give you a minor detail about the Shank Blackbeard fight that obviously happened at some point. Like they fought on this island. Like, maybe that's it. Maybe they, maybe we'll get the name of the island, we'll get the town that happened in, maybe we'll get the name of, like, the attack Blackbeard used, or a hint towards how he did it. I don't know. Maybe we'll find out why Shanks is so interested in Blackbeard. Just throwing out some things that we could learn in the movie that have nothing to do with my original ideas. But, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I don't know when this will be out, and I don't know how well edited it will be. I recorded this with audio only, not with video, because I'm in a hotel room in Jamaica and my lighting isn't great for videos, unless it's during the day and it's really dark out right now, so I wasn't able to do it the way I normally would with video, and to be honest, I don't have a lot of footage of the movie to work with, so we'll have to see what I can do. It will be, it will be a difficult edit, and I don't know when it will be done, because once again, I'm in Jamaica, I don't have access to great internet, so getting like footage from the internet, it's difficult enough already. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave it a like if you did. Tell me your thoughts on One Piece film bread in the comments section down below. Tell me what you think will happen, what you think it will focus on. I just wanted to make like a speculatory discussion video. I'm trying to, ever since hitting 1K, one, focus more on the Pacific series. I want to focus on One Piece, My Hero, Evangelion, and Superhero Comics, and I want that to be the focus of the channel because I really want to start making videos weekly again. Hitting 1K re-energized me, and I'm really ready to jump into it, but I don't know when you'll be saying this, just because of how long it is and how difficult it will be to edit, but tell me on your thoughts on the movie in the comments. Like the video, obviously. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my PayPal, which is linked in the description box down below. It just helps. I uh, work a part-time job. I can't I make much money because I'm on disability. And it helps, one, supply money to fund and buy series to review. 
I don't like pirating, so I try to watch everything I review and talk about legally. It helps me get equipment. It also just helps me justify the time and effort these videos take. These videos, some of the well-edited videos can take like two, three, four, five, six days to edit. Some of the really longer ones can take like two weeks to get out. So, they're really hard work, and I've really been trying to do a video a week. But, if you can support down below, it will help you guys see more content. Maybe I'll make a video explaining all this in detail, and why not? I don't really have a Patreon that I really put out there very often. Maybe I'll explain all that at some point. But guys, hope you enjoyed, as I said already. Above all else, have a great day, and I am going to sign out now.